On January 11, 2006, an explosion and fire erupted at the Bethune Point Wastewater Treatment Plant, operated by the city of Daytona Beach, Florida. Two workers were killed, and a third was gravely injured. The explosion occurred as the workers used a cutting torch above a storage tank containing highly flammable methyl alcohol, or methanol. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board investigated the accident and issued a report with findings and safety recommendations. The Bethune Point facility employs 11 full-time workers and treats 13 million gallons of wastewater a day. Methanol is used as an additive in the wastewater treatment process. The CSB found this tragedy occurred because the city did not have a program to control hot work, that is, activities such as welding and cutting that can ignite flammable materials. Furthermore, the city did not adequately train the workers on the flammable and explosive hazards of methanol. Our investigation revealed that flaws in the engineering design and maintenance greatly increase the severity of this accident. The animation that follows is based on the evidence we collected. On the day of the accident, three workers were removing a hurricane-damaged steel roof at the Bethune Point Wastewater Treatment Plant. The roof covered two chemical storage tanks, one empty, the other containing about 3,000 gallons of methanol, a highly flammable liquid. Two of the workers were up in a man lift basket where they were using an octiacetylene torch to cut the roof into sections. The third worker was operating a crane to lower the roof sections to the ground. Beneath them, methanol vapor, which is invisible but colored gray here for illustration, was venting from the top of the tank as the morning sun warmed the liquid inside. As designed, the tank vented the methanol vapor through a flame arrester, a simple device intended to prevent the contents of the tank from being ignited by a fire outside. As the workers cut the roof, sparks from the torch showered down onto the tank. The sparks ignited the methanol vapor, creating a fireball under the two workers in the open manlift basket. The fire flashed into the flame arrester, but it was badly corroded and it failed to function. Flames spread instantly into the tank, igniting the methanol inside. The force of the explosion from the methanol air mixture inside the tank was so great it rounded out the tank bottom and lifted the tank walls. The blast ejected the level switch and flame arrester from the tank. Plastic piping connected to the tank fractured as the tank lifted and deformed. Methanol, under pressure from the explosion, spewed from the broken pipes and ignited, spreading the fire. Methanol from broken pipes sprayed the crane cab, caught fire, and burned the worker inside. He died from his injuries the following day. Burning methanol vapors flowed out of the open vent on the top of the tank. In the man lift basket, both workers were now burning. One jumped or fell from the basket and died. The other worker escaped by climbing onto the roof, jumping to a lower roof, and then to the ground. He was gravely injured but survived after many months in the hospital. The CSB found that some of the causes of this accident could be traced back to 1993 when the methanol tank was installed. These include problems with the flame arrester and the use of plastic piping on the tank. CSB investigators found that the flame arrester plates were made of aluminum, which is readily corroded by methanol. These plates are designed to allow vapors to vent safely from the tank. In case of fire outside the tank, the plates cool and extinguish flames and prevent them from igniting the flammable methanol inside. In this case, the plates were so corroded they were incapable of quenching the flames. This corrosion could have been detected through regular inspections, yet the CSB found that the city was not aware of the need to inspect the flame arrester and had not done so since its installation 13 years earlier. Plant managers should verify that critical safety devices such as flame arresters are regularly inspected and maintained. Facility designers should ensure that proper materials are specified for pipes carrying hazardous liquids. The engineering company that designed the Bethune Point methanol storage system, Camp Dresser and McKee, specified that the piping and valves be made of PVC plastic, not steel. Steel is stronger and tougher than PVC, 
Had steel piping been used, it likely would have remained intact during the explosion, and the resulting fire would have been less severe. Worker training was another important issue identified in the CSB's investigation. Bethune Point workers could not recall ever receiving any training on the hazards of methanol. In fact, the employees only received a total of about one hour of safety training in each of the two years preceding the accident. Florida law does not require state or local governments to provide public employees with safety training or to comply with OSHA safety standards. Yet public employees may face workplace hazards similar to those found in the private sector where compliance with OSHA standards is mandatory. Florida had a health and safety program for public workers, but it was eliminated in 2000. In addition to Florida, public workers in 25 other states also are not covered by OSHA regulations, though some are covered by voluntary programs. OSHA regulations require, among other things, chemical hazard training and hot work programs, which could have prevented the explosion at Bethune Point. To prevent future accidents, the board made recommendations to the state of Florida, the city of Daytona Beach, and to others. The CSB recommended that Florida enact legislation to require workplace health and safety programs for all public employees in the state, including chemical safety standards at least as effective as OSHA's. We recommended that until state laws are in place, the city of Daytona Beach adopt health and safety ordinances to cover its workers. We also made recommendations to the National Fire Protection Association and to OSHA that would further restrict the use of plastic in piping systems for flammable liquids. The tragedy at the wastewater plant could have been prevented had the city followed the same safety standards required of private employers. Workers in private industry benefit from a variety of OSHA standards designed to prevent deaths and injuries. Public sector employees deserve no less. Thank you for watching this CSB safety video. For more information about the Bethune Point accident or other CSB investigations, please visit our website at csb.gov.